much, Mr. Vice President, Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. I have the honor to present to you my fifth report on the situation of human rights in Belarus. Um, based on the mandate the Council assigned to me in November 2012. In the report, I had to account for the severe nationwide crackdown on peaceful protesters in February and March this year, which revealed the cyclical nature of oppression of human rights in Belarus. During those months, Peaceful demonstrations emerged against an ill-devised social measure called the Parasitism Law, which imposed a tax for all persons unemployed for at least half a year. As a response, more than a thousand individuals were arbitrarily arrested and held in custody, and then many of them sentenced to incarceration in administrative courts against all evidence of their peacefulness. Political opponents, human rights activists were apprehended without any given reason in a planned so-called preemptive manner. As of today, a dozen of arrested are accused of having plotted against the state or having prepared riots. There are credible allegations of recourse to torture in order to coerce them into confessing to the politically motivated accusations. This procedure is conducted without any public communications and it raises the danger of a new round of political detainees in, after Belarus had released its last political prisoners on the eve of the presidential elections in 2015. The March events displayed a periodically returning element in the authorities' handling of civic and political human rights. They keep turning to a violent suppression of any peaceful exercise of those rights whenever that expression reaches a level that cannot be blackened out by the fully state-owned media. The reaction of the authorities was woefully identical with the response the authorities had given to demonstrations following the presidential election of 2010, and as you may remember, it was that particular cycle of massive oppression that prompted the creation of this mandate. Just three months before these events, I had described an apparent easing of the authorities vis-a-vis protests and pickets. Um, the practice of sending demonstrators immediately to prison seemed to have been modified last year at least and replaced by a system of administering fines of it non-payment was also leading to jail and even property seizure that many victims uh, found more devastating than prison time. Nevertheless, the events of earlier this year show that in Belarus, short periods of reticence to use the harsh laws are followed by heavy violations of basic freedoms. Importantly, the recurring violations are based on a steady lock of reforms of the underlying systemic laws. Even in peaceful periods, these laws continue to make any public use of civic rights a crime, at least de jure. It is then dependent on the authorities' arbitrary decisions when they would become de facto criminals, exposed to law enforcement violence and to a juridical system without due trial and without equality before the law. Let me list a few positive developments on human rights in Belarus since June last year. The allowance for two members of opposition to enter parliament following the elections of September 2016 and also the registration of the Tell the Truth movement last month 
albeit not as a political organization. Uh, the country ratified the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities last November and it submitted its periodic report to the Human Rights Committee, which actually had been due for 16 years. The authorities have also adopted a so-called national plan of implementation of a few selected recommendations of the UPR. My new report in front of you an anal analyzes in detail this list of exactly 100 activities, planned activities, which unfortunately is not available in English to the public. Last year, before this Council, I had recommended the authorities to adopt such a plan. But the document as presented, however, does not match the definition of a human rights plan, because even if fully implemented, the reality of human rights on ground would not change. The reasons for that are twofold. First, the drafting authorities kept human rights activists and political parties away from the process. Second, the plan avoids the systemic and long known human rights issues of Belarus, the very issues which have been the subject of numerous recommendations by many international and regional human rights mechanisms and have remained the same for the last two decades. Let me list some of these uh, issues in a very brief manner. Um, it is the permission-based regime of human rights governance which is the most objectionable and actually, object and, and actually the most easy uh, to rectify with, uh, uh, with one gesture by the President. The cornerstone of that regime is the continuing presence and application of Article 193.1 of the Penal Code, which criminalizes any public activity not pre-authorized by the officials. Secondly, despite countless recommendations to do so, Belarus is still to establish a national, national human rights institution based on the Paris Principles. Similarly, Belarus still has to adopt an anti-discrimination law. Belarus remains the only country in Europe which does not host a private media with nationwide coverage and thereby excluding the presence of any broadcast pluralism in the country. The holding of parliamentary elections last September unfortunately still fell short of basic standards as assessed by the Office of Democratic Institutions and Human Rights of OSCE. Um, the elections would have been a good opportunity to implement those recommendations and um, uh, unfortunately the government doesn't plan to implement them not even before the next municipal elections. On the issue of torture, Belarus has yet to create definitions and make declarations under the Convention Against Torture. And distinguished delegates, finally, but very importantly, the cyclical approach to human rights by the Belarus government finds another proof in the application in the ongoing application of death penalty. The country not only remains the last one in Europe to apply capital punishment, but in 2016 Belarus executed four individuals, which is the highest number since 2008. And after the cut-off date of my report, another individual was executed. The conditions under which executions are carried out keep amounting to cruel treatment of both the convicted and of their families. The judicial system does not provide for a fair trial which would be extremely important in the case of death sentences. Mr. President, 
the recent crackdown on peaceful demonstration, demonstrators, the continuing practices of harassment of NGOs, the detention of new political prisoners, and the continuing disrespect for the right of life, right to life, show no real effort to tackle even a part of the systemic problems highlighted for many years by various human rights mechanisms. And these problems demonstrate that there are no reasons for the international community, for the UN Human Rights Council to uh, stop the international scrutiny of the situation of human rights in Belarus. This is, way, this is why I also reiterate my call towards the authorities to engage with the mandate and jointly with the civil society and political parties of Belarus embark on a reform of the laws and regulations underlying to the described system of deprivation of human rights. Thank you. I thank you. And